it's almost like we're a manager of two different teams and one team plays in Serie A and one plays in the Champions League because the results are vastly different. Yes, hello, welcome into Living in Sports, here for another episode of Glory Hunter. And this time we're back with Roma after a little adventure with Austria the last time out. If you're new around here, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode and hit that like button if you are enjoying the series so far. The start of season four, we're nearly a fifth of the way through here and we still haven't won any trophies. Hopefully we can change that this season though. And as you can see from the results in front of you, we've started off our Serie A campaign very, very well. Champions League, not so much. So uh, when we, we, we met each other last time for a, a Roma episode, we've beaten Spezia and we've beaten Crotone in the two first games of the season. And since then, we've not lost a game in Serie A. We beat Cagliari 2-0 thanks to two goals from Tammy Abraham. I'll miss out the Champions League in a minute and we'll come back to that. We then drew frustratingly with Breccia. We did have a man sent off early on, Benjamin Sesco. Abraham got us a penalty uh, and that was a good result since we were 1-0 down early on, then went down to 10 men, but we managed to, to just about come back and get ourselves a draw in that one. So though it looks a disappointing result, it's actually not bad when you think we were 1-0 down and down to 10 men. We did then play Atalanta and what was a game we should have won Really, we had a lot of chances, but unfortunately we could not score and it was nil-nil. We then had a very tough match against Napoli, probably our toughest one so far in the Serie A. It was a good 2-0 win. Goals for Calafiori and Raspadori before Danny Carvial got sent off for Napoli. Napoli struggled in Serie A this year, to be honest. We then played Bologna, two late goals for Tammy Abraham yet again. He got us the two goals in that victory and he got us another two goals in the victory against Frosinone. And that leaves us in Serie A in third position, just two points off into Milan, who are top. And we do play them in the second game of today's episode or one point behind AC, one point ahead of Juventus. It looks like a four horse race up the top of the league table at the moment. But remember... We've not played any of the tough teams in the league at the moment. The toughest one we've played was Napoli. And as I say, they're struggling. Only getting two wins, two draws out of their eight games so far. Average rating-wise, Tam Abraham, best in the league. Over eight is his average rating at the moment in Serie A. He's also scored eight goals, which is obviously our top goal scorer at the moment. Four man of the matches. He's doing pretty well. And Kepa's doing not bad either. Six clean sheets in his first eight Serie A matches. Some of you may have thought maybe spending that amount of money on Kepa was, was not a good idea. Well, it's proven to be fairly, fairly decent so far. We're one of only two sides to be unbeaten at the moment, ourselves and Inter Milan. Obviously, we play each other in the second game of today's episode, so that might stop being the case. Maybe one of us will win and only one of us will keep the unbeaten run going, or maybe there'll be a draw and we'll both still be unbeaten. Who knows? But before that, we play against Atletico Madrid in our Champions League group and that's not going quite as well. As you'll have seen from the fixtures, we have played two games in the Champions League already. Zenit St. Petersburg were the first team we played. We lost 2-1. We started off doing quite well. Went at 1-0 thanks to a goal from Benjamin Sesco. Then Kimpembe got sent off just a minute later for a stupid, stupid challenge. And Zenit ended up winning 2-1 thanks to a late goal from Eldor Shamuradov and those of you who have been with us from the start will know he was with us season one of Glory Hunter scoring one goal in his 20 league games he played he was the backup to Tammy Abraham that year yeah we sold him to Zena and it's come back to bite us as he uh, he scored the winner against us in our Champions League group and then we played against Borussia Dortmund and to be honest we played against Yusufa Makoko because um, he scored four goals against us all the goals came in the first half, around 4, 1 at half time. To be honest, 22 minutes in and Makoko already had a hat trick. Yeah, he's pretty good. And as you can see, that leaves us currently bottom of our group with a game up against Atletico Madrid today. Yeah, it's going to be quite tricky, I would say, if, uh, if uh, our previous games are anything to go by uh, to try and get into the Champions League knockout round. However, 
I would take third place. If you think about it, dropping into Europa League with the squad we have, probably have a better chance of winning Europa League than we do the Champions League. So today's games are up against Atletico Madrid in the Champions League group stage and then we play a top of the table clash really up against Inter Milan. So let's get into it and let's show the team we're going to be playing for this game up against Atletico. So we have had a bit of rotation throughout the previous games in the team. To be honest I'm not quite sure what my best 11 is at the moment. I'm fairly confident in what my best forward players are and midfielders but it's the back three I'm not quite sure about at this moment in time. But this is the team we're going to go with up against Atletico. And to be honest, I think this is my full strength team. Kepa in goal. Romagnoli, Zagadou and Attila at centre back. Datlo and Christensen out wide. Camavinga, Pellegrini and Rice in midfield. Abraham and Sesco up front. You can see Abraham eight goals. Sesco just the two. But Raspadori, who's on the bench, just above my head there. Four goals he's scored so far this season for it. He's pretty decent coming off the bench. He's been starting a few games as well instead of Sesco. But Abraham's the main man this year again. Let's see if he can continue to score some goals for us. So looking at the teams there, we've had some fairly decent form. Just a loss to Dortmund in the most recent ones. Atletico in very good form. But they don't appear to really have a striker. They have DePaul, who I would say is more of an attacking midfielder. Or a central midfielder as opposed to a centre forward. So, um, yeah, they're not playing with a striker. Let's see how that works out for them. We are playing in our red. Atletico playing in their blue. And as an early highlight here, as Demiral plays it forward, single, and forward toward DePaul, back to Koki and Malcolm. And can we win the ball back? No, we can't. Single's got it on the right-hand side. Can he cross the ball in? He gets to the byline, into the middle, and Carrasco scores six minutes in. Their first shot of the game. Do they really need a striker? You can see Singo and Acres of space on the right-hand side. Attila tries to close him down unsuccessfully. No one tracks Carrasco and 1-0 ahead early on our Atletico here. But there's a highlight from the kickoff. You know what that normally means? It's normally going to be a chance. Christensen already picking up a yellow card on that left-hand side. Reaches the byline back to Rice and Christensen again and back to Rice again and Camavinga. And he goes all the way back to Attila now and we recycle the play. And Romagnoli comes forward, plays it to Zagadou and Pellegrini and Dallo's in some space. And to Abraham, back to Dallo and to Sesco who hits that just wide of the goal. Cracking header from Sesco. We're still down 1-0 here early on in this game. A couple of highlights, but we are still losing. Look at that though, Atletico only having the one shot so far in the first 20 minutes and it was the goal. Typical. Corner ball for us. Pellegrini swings it into the back. Post and Abraham heads that in. It looks like it might have come off the defender with the last touch, but they've given the goal to Abraham. Pellegrini with the corner ball swung in nicely to the back post. We'll watch this again here. In towards the back post. He rises up above three defenders and it goes off the chest to the man on the post. It goes in the goal. That's the most important thing. And we're back on level terms just before the half hour mark here. There's a throw in on the left for Atletico Madrid in toward Carrasco, the goal scorer for Atletico. And Koki with it now. The ball's played forward. De Paul. Carrasco. Can he get second? It's a good challenge. And it drops to Lorente. Single with the ball back on the right hand side now. Can he get it into the middle? He tries to find Malcolm, but it's intercepted by Rice. And Christensen comes away with it. And we've got a chance here. Can he come forward? Can he find Abraham? He does indeed. Goes out to Pellegrini and Sesco's in behind the defence here. Can he finish? Oh, how has he missed it? One on one chance with the goalkeeper and he's just blazed it wide. And it's still one all here with just five minutes to go in this first half. An exhilarating first half so far. We've had lots and lots of chances, but we've only put one of them away. And now Atletico have won the ball back here with Lorente. Back to Demiral. Koki out to Single and Malcolm. And Single. Plays it back to Lorente and Demiral and they switch the play toward the left-hand side and Lodi has it here. Carrasco into DePaul who gets by the defenders. DePaul tries to chip the keeper from the edge of the box. It was pretty poor, that effort. And it still remains 1-0 here and we've reached half-time. To be honest, we probably deserve to be ahead if you look at the number of shots. So our XG's a lot lower than Atletico's. We've had more chances and we probably, as I say, should be winning. I've not made any change in the half time. There has been some fairly poor performances. You know, Christensen not doing well in his yellow. Kamavinga is not doing as great as I'd like him to do. Attila and Zagadou playing particularly badly at centre back. But there's an hour gone now when we are going to make some changes. You can see how tired those 
forward players are. And remember, we've got into Milan in just a few days' time, so we could do a refreshing. It's Sesco who will come off for Raspadori, and Calafiore will come on for Christensen at left back. McKenney's come on for Camavinga for the last 10 minutes here, but this second half has not had any highlights at all in it. And it looks like we're going to end up with a one all draw here against Atletico Madrid. Not the worst result in the world, but when you look at the way that we've uh, conducted ourselves in this group so far, we could have done with the three points. So we are still going to be bottom of the table. I say I'm not happy with what I've just seen from this team. You can see we are bottom of the table. We're only three points off Atletico Madrid, who are in second. Zenit do still have a game to play against Dortmund though, so who knows what's going to happen with that one. Not not the best result we could have hoped for, but I suppose we uh, have to make up for that in the future games in this group. The other game in our group ended up being a one all draw as well. So Muradov getting another late goal and then Dortmund managing to get an equaliser just after that. So our group does end up looking, if we look in the left-hand side, Dortmund on seven, Atletico and Zenit on four, and ourselves on one. So we need to try to get a victory against Atletico in the next round of fixtures to try and catch back up with themselves and Zenit, St. Petersburg. But we can put the Champions League on the back burner for just now because we're going to be having a more important look at Serie A as we play against Inter Milan in just five days' time. Hopefully some of our more tired players will have been refreshed by then. We've got to say a tough one against top of the league Inter Milan. Right, so here we are, ready for this second game of the episode up against Inter Milan. Top of the table clash. If you look at Serie A, AC Milan played yesterday. They drew 2 all up against Frosinone, who are uh, very much a lower table side at the moment. So a win today will put us top of the table. Can we do it? Let's find out. Let's look at the team that we're going to be using in this game and it's Kepa in goal as always he is our new first choice keeper playing well so far we've had a bit of a shake up at the back we're going to move Zagadou back into his mid his middle role he was always in the middle last season just going to do that again today Ron Magnoli to his left and we'll bring Kaike back in to the right hand side of that back three let's see how he gets on Dallo and Christensen still at wing back playing well this season Camavinga Pellegrini and Rice in midfield and Abraham is going to partner Raspadori today Sesco drops to the bench. We can bring him on in the second half if we need to. But raspador has got a little bit more pace. Can get him behind the defence. I think that's our best chance up against Inter Milan. Just try and get him behind them. Try not to have the physicality with the three centre-backs. But get Raspadori in behind. Let's see if that happens today. So here is Inter Milan team. Zapata Martinez up front. Coop Miners, Barella and Kunku in midfield. Skriniar, Romero and De Vrij at centre-back. The other three centre-backs will be trying to get in behind with Raspadori. Let's see if it happens. A top-of-the-table clash. And hopefully it's one we can come away with the victory from. Away from home, so it could be quite difficult. But let's see what happens as Rob Agnoli throws the ball in here. Six minutes in. He gets it back from Raspadori. In behind toward Rice. Can he get around the keeper? He tries to, but it's a good defensive recovery. And now he plays it back to Kamavinga who hits it. And it's a good save from Musso in the goal. And it's a free kick here on Kunku toward Duvan Zapata at the back post. He heads it in. But there's a chance it might be offside. Let's have a look here with VAR and let's see if it is offside. No. It's been given. It wasn't offside. No one was marking him at the back post. There's two men unmarked. And Inter go ahead early on in this game. 1-0 thanks to a headed goal from Duvan Zapata. Oh, not a great start. Throw in here for Inter Milan. 25 minutes in. And Kunku forward to Zapata. What's he going to do with it now? Abraham somehow wins that ball back. He dropped very deep to win that. And the ball's launched toward Raspadori. But De Vrij gets on the end of it. And look at Dina. Plays it back to Romero. And Camavinga wins this ball when he drives forward and he hits it. Oh, he should have taken another couple of touches there. He was just too far out and just kind of lashed at it. And over the bar it goes. And this is a game of not many chances so far. You can't afford to be wasting them if there's not going to be many shots in the game. And that's just what we've done there. As we reach half time, 1 0 down, no one playing particularly well. We simply have to be better in front of goal. That's what I'll say. And let's see how we do in this second half. Romagnoli not playing well, nor is Raspadori or Abraham, to be honest. So I think with 35 minutes to go, we're going to make some changes. And Raspadori 
will come off and we'll bring on Sesco for him. Looking further back in the midfield. Pellegrini is not playing well, so we'll bring on Samuele Risi as well. We paid lots of money for those players in the summer transfer window. Let's see what they can do here. And Kunku will swing this ball into the box and Des heads it over. We just made a substitution. Rice has went off and McKenney's come on and it nearly cost us there as we made a change towards you know, the, the end of a, a corner routine or something like that. Rissi will take this free kick from a long way out. Oh, what a save from Musso. There was no chance we should have scored that. That was, you know, a good 30 yards out. But we did nearly, nearly get in if it was not for that save. As we move to an attacking mentality here, pause this game and we'll go a little bit more direct, more direct with a extremely high tempo. We don't need to work the ball into the box transition will counter and will distribute quickly never mind short kicks and distribute to the centre back get the ball long get it up towards the two boys up front go and get us a goal and here we go Ron Magnoli launches the ball long here Sesco wins his header and McKenney plays it into Risi who loses the ball to Nkunku Duvan Zapata gets challenged by Camavinga though and he's injured and Risi into Sesco can he finish oh it's a great defensive block there from the defender as Sesco had a chance in behind the defence there, but it wasn't quite, wasn't quite good enough. He just forced himself out wide and it ended up not being anywhere near. The ball swung in by Risi there and it's headed away by Skriniar. It's back to Ron Magnoli and that's the end of the highlight. They have went down, I must say, to 10 men now. Duvan Zapata had to go off injured and they didn't have any substitution, substitutions left, which uh, is good for us. We are playing an attacking mentality, so let's see if we can launch this ball up the last four minutes of the game. Can we get ourselves an equaliser here? Or can 10-man enter hold on to this 1-0 lead? Rob Magnoli now. McKenney forward to Abraham. He's in behind the defence. Can he finish? He can't. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He looked like he was offside, though, it would appear. There's one minute of added time left to go. McKenney forward to Sesco, who goes down the left. Into Abraham. Heads it wide at the goal. And that could be the last chance of the game for us. And we're going to end up losing 1-0 to Inter Milan in a game we probably deserve to walk away with something from here. However, late on, Abraham won the ball back from that goal kick and nearly got himself a chance for a goal. But you imagine as the time ticks down, Inter will walk away with the victory here. And we are going to be disappointed with that 1-0 loss. Our first defeat of the season against an Inter Milan side who ended up Finishing the game with 10 men, thanks to that Zapata injury. Look at the expected goals, 1 to 0.6. We had a few more shots than them. Possession was very equal. It feels unfair that Inter Milan have walked away with the victory there, but our defences didn't play good enough. Look at that, Romagnoli and Zagaru, 6.2s. Not good enough at all. So that defeat leaves us 5 points adrift of Inter Milan at the moment, which is not ideal at all. Two points behind AC with uh, Juventus still to play their game, so they might jump ahead of us as well. And looking at the schedule, we'll probably come back for the games against Dortmund and Lazio later into December. That important match, the last one in the Champions League group stage. Need to see uh, how we get on. Will we end up in Europa League? Will we end up in the Champions League? Will we end up being knocked out of Europe altogether? That'd be very disappointing indeed. And then obviously the game against Lazio, an important Rome derby. You don't want to miss that one, do you? Disappointing episode today. 1-0 draw against Atletico Madrid and a 1-0 loss to Inter. Two games we could probably have walked away with victories from had the tide turned in our favour ever so slightly in that. But you know what? You always hit some dodgy spells. That's one of the ones we've just hit there. Hopefully we can turn it around and by the time we come back for the games against Dortmund and Lazio, we should hopefully be dominating yet again. So if you have enjoyed this episode, please don't leave a like on it. It really does help us out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until the next one, which are the games against Dortmund and Lazio, we'll see you then.